you see all these crazy cars with turbos in the trunk uh-huh. or <laughs> dumb <laughs> butter <laughs> bars. <laughs> yeah, who came up with that one? Uh, it was just sometimes I just sit there and I just stare at things and I I had looked over data the prior year to see how to improve that that prior year was the year that we struggled and sucked Mm -hmm. and i it it was the first year of the big block so a lot heavier in the front so for people that don't know the butter bar is a bar that comes off the back of a vehicle five six feet it looks like and they put weight back there yes to try to get the weight moved i guess to get the weight moved using less weight okay yeah so for people that don't know what we're talking about and you coined this yeah this bar yeah (laughs) from the gm (laughs) yeah from the get-go i told brad i sent him a little picture of the back of my car with the little paint marker lines (laughs) and a square weight on the back i said hey i want to build something like this he said, shut up, you're lying. <laughs> now, Brad has known me for a long time to know I come up with a lot of ideas. It does. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. some, I'm joking, this one I wasn't. <laughs> Brad thought, seems a little more reasonable, we too. We weren't so. <laughs> sure whether, I thought he was joking at See? first. Uh, and he sends me this, he's like, what do you think about this? I was like, what? <laughs> I, I, I had a feeling he was serious because he always comes up with these weird ideas. And I, I believe I told him no. I said, I don't want to do that. I'm like, no, <laughs> screw that. And then he you was probably like, did. And you said, well, if you don't do it, I'm going to find somebody that will. And I said, <laughs> okay, well, it looks like I'll help you. <laughs> so then you guys decided to build this bar off the back. And I guess that it doesn't need to be light. It doesn't need to be chromoly. Was that just? It was chromoly. It was chromoly. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It, was chromoly. it okay. weighed about 30, 40 pounds or something. Yeah. Just the bars. How yeah. long was it? About that I long. I think it was, yeah. wasn't it like seven feet from the axle? I don't remember exactly. Wow, there are people spicy. that have tape measured it, though, if you want to ask your audience. Yeah, <laughs> somebody out there probably is sitting home frustrated right now with their nine-second streetcar that was all pissed about it when it came out. <laughs> there was a lot of people that hated it, and, yeah, I mean, we we had made one. That isn't the first one that came out. We had made one, and I knew that the backlash that it was going to get was going to be tremendous. Just because a person that would, had done well, when someone sees something out there like this, they're going to hate it. Yeah. Right. Because this guy is winning. We can't have him winning more because of this obnoxious butthurt bar. And we made one, and I said, Brad, you're going to have to stand on it to make it me feel good about it. And it held him, but it was a little wobbly. <laughs> Well, you also have to realize when Joey does stuff, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this. The PC it, way. He kind of is, is he's kind of a cheap ass. And uh, so I believe the car at the time still right? had the factory bumper crash right. things. And, yes. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? The Those Fox that, body has yeah. a crushable. Yeah. So thing in the back. The parachute like and everything is still thing. mounted to those. Yeah. Oh. And I'm like, why don't we take that? He's like, no, I don't want to change that, you know? And I think it's like a rock solid motorsports parachute mount mounted to that. Yeah. And like we had to mount off existing stuff to it. And like we kept doing it. And it was to the point where when I would stand on it, the back of the car would roll in. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, this is not going to work. <laughs> and I kept saying, like, well, how's the parachute gonna deploy? And he's like, we'll figure that out later. Let's just figure out how to get this done. I was like, nah, you don't use your parachute most of these. Right. Well, that's another thing they could complain about. Uh-huh. Was yeah. that, oh, well, it's, it's not safe. safe. <laughs> you yeah. mount the parachute to the bar. <laughs> you could. We didn't, though. But either way, we came out with a second design, and it was very, very stable. Went out and did some testing. Obviously, I did some scaling, and it was tremendous the amount of percentage, front yeah. and rear percentage, that moved with what little weight and I had done some mathematics with this to know how far back we wanted it and how much it should move. Was there a software for that? (laughs) No, (laughs) no, unfortunately. Joey likes likes to be the, uh, from the, uh, the hangover, you know, when all the numbers are going. (laughs) Yes. That's what Joey likes to do. And I'm like, huh? No. Yeah. Yeah. So he had a mathematical number and it said, we only need about this much weight. And like, I think you tried it and it was way too much, wasn't it? Yeah. it, it, It was very aggressive. 
whether it was just in motion made it aggressive because obviously when you scale stuff it's just Sitting, static yeah, yeah. yeah and so yeah i went out and tested with it on this road by my house and nearly wheelied the whole way the first time <laughs> without the door wasn't it yes, <laughs> yes. i got a picture or a video of yep it. and it was very promising honestly to do what i wanted and at the time we also added air shocks in the front Mm-hmm. And in a lot front, of people didn't front. even know about the air shocks for the longest time. They probably still until don't. today. Yeah, until, they you, until, still until don't. you told them. <laughs> I, I didn't know about it, but I've never looked into the right. front shocks. No, because there was so much travel, there wasn't enough oomph, and these air shocks would provide extra oomph, and you Just could turn them on the edge. Mm. Based on whatever you wanted in the advanced tables and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's people out there that love advanced tables. Yeah, they're yeah, CO2 powered. You, you get a Holly yeah. guy talking about advanced tables. Right. <laughs> right. So True, you're here they would turn on if you were spinning. They would turn off if you were at full travel. You know, there's yeah. a lot of stuff that went into it. That's pretty trick. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah. It's cool. yeah, this was before the long travels were a thing right. also. I had, like... The first set of shocks that were like super long travel, and so somebody had to make those custom for yep, what you were trying. Yeah, to Yeah, Ron G did from Afterworks, and mm-hmm. this was one of the first set that were this long, and so it was two different things. People were like, "What is going on here?" <laughs> yeah, and it, it's it was it was a fun year. We we definitely won a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it was banned the first time I brought it out of the trailer, and just did it fit in the trailer like that too? No, no. no. So you had to have it removable. So yeah. the first very first race I went to, I. Knew what I was going to do. And <laughs> I pulled the car out, got the golf cart out, whatever, and back to the car up the trailer ramp. And we had been parked off to the side a little bit and put it on and pulled it out of the trailer and just like, what? And the people just flocked. <laughs> like, what is this it, it contraption? Was, yeah, it was <laughs> insane. I mean, nobody had ever seen anything like it before. Yeah. And, Nobody thought anybody would end, try to do anything like Be that. Be dumb enough, I mean. Eh. <laughs> Nobody thought anybody was adventurous enough. There I was, was no say. rules against it until then. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was adventurous. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, it was a lot. It was cool, and it worked extremely well and did did what I wanted it to. And I think anybody that's ever seen the videos of it knows it worked pretty oh, yeah. dang well. I mean, it was, like, just nearly dragging, and the front end was still... The, the wheels, the tires were still on the ground, but it was like you were looking up. It was defying all laws of normal yes. drag racing that you watch. It was very wild, for sure. I mean. People thought it was a wheelie bar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody yeah, said it was a wheelie bar. I guess you could just claim it was. Yeah. And then you can't really outlaw it, right? Well, they well, outlaw wheelie bars. Stuff, yeah, yeah, it doesn't allow but bars. Either way, it, it was cool. It, I mean, I used it a lot, and there was lots of. You know, it made a lot of people, a lot of promoters think about what they were doing for sure. I mean, it got banned several different events. Yeah, I mean, when they call it no butt hurt bars allowed, you know it's specific to you. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a guy out there that copied it length for length and tape measured it and everything. But, I mean. Did he even have the Heims? (laughs) No, he didn't. But either way, I mean, it's out there and. We used it for a couple of years, and then, like we talked earlier in the podcast, that you know this last year we just didn't street race at all, yeah. honestly, and it's just not, not, not. It's not the same as it was before, and yeah, the butt hurt bar on a track surface. Oh either. no, no way. way! Only on no a way. terrible street. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, we've and we've actually refined the combination now to where. Maybe we won't need it as much, yeah. Um, but either way, it's we don't do a whole lot of street racing anymore, and it was a fun and cool phase, and now it just sits in the garage. I feel like the argument could be made, though, that it was safer than weights that people normally put in the back of their car. And that was my biggest argument. 
I said, you know what? I don't care if you ban the butthurt bar, but you need to start making sure everybody's ballast yeah. is bolted down properly. Yeah, because I've seen some scary looking weights put in cars. We've seen oh, yeah. Some very- I mean- oh, yeah. Some you did it back in the day. Remember the den on the side of the car? I mean, well, you, people yeah. just chuck stuff in the back yeah. of there, you oh, know? Yeah. Sandbags, whatever yeah. it is. I mean, I mean but, I've seen bags of tools and yeah. nuts and bolts in a, like a craftsman yeah. tool bag just yeah. put in the trunk of a even car. Even like the weights, like a 45-pound plate that's yeah. not like not well secured. secured. Like right. even secured with like a couple bolts into like some lame sheet metals. Not yep. very good in a rollover. Right. We've seen sandbags fall out of a trunk before oh, yeah. and just... Sand all over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in front of another car. Yeah. yeah. It happened at World Cup one year. This Honda left the starting line and it just left sand oh, on yeah. the whole track. And I ha- believe how it. do you clean that out of prep? Seriously. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to scrape the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, they had to scrape a bunch of it. And they were right. blaming the powder coat. They're like, oh, it must have been powder coat. I'm like, nah, he Shut up. Back there. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I mean, most of the detractors from the bar are like, oh, well, what if the weight goes flying off of there? Right. Whatever. Like, I mean, it's, you know, NHRA's rules is two half-inch bolts or whatever, yeah. and that's yep. how it's It was secured. extremely safe. Yeah. and Whether or not you ran into the... me, that, well, if you ran into any kind of car, right. you're going to get hurt. Yeah, you yeah. shouldn't be that close to the bar. No. No other car should be that close to the bar where it's going to hit it. <laughs> right. <laughs> At any right. point. It yeah. was an easy way for promoters or other racers that mm-hmm. were afraid of us to easily... Nay, say you know the bar and yeah. Well, I like to laugh at like the street racing kind of a little bit because they they claim this outlaw right, but then when anybody does anything, Uh they're immediately like, "We need more rules." Right. I was like, "You were an outlaw last week." Right. And now it's like somebody shows up with a wing or no front end, and now it's like, (laughs) "We need." A, a commissioner. Right. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, we need a committee to make rules. Yeah. And... Well, that's not even just street racing. I mean, small tire no prep is there now. Yeah. Like, there's all these people, you know, no boosted big blocks. Oh, yeah. Stock suspension. Well, like, they're just class no racing. No prep is yep. it, it, 100%. It I mean, people are starting to talk about weight and whatnot. Like, you are class racing. Mm-hmm. The problem is, I think it's gotten to where, you know, small tire no prep racing, you have. A group of cars that are extremely fast, and then you have the guys that just want to go out and have fun. There's just too big of a gap between them. Yeah. And the guys that are just doing it for fun, which we do (laughs) halfway-ish, and they they don't want to go out there and race anymore, and so they just get on the internet and cry, and they need their own class, and... And I'm fine with B classes, but mm-hmm. once you have a B class and then you're like, oh, it's 12,000 to win, you're, you're going to bring out people no, yeah. that are faster than you. And that's what yeah. I've always it's said is money will, draws. Yeah, the cream will always ride to, yeah. to the top. And it's like no prep started and, you know, the diversion between average Joe and mm-hmm. faster programs has gotten wider. And the B class would be the same thing. Yeah. Like, you yeah, look it's, at, how it, it's how it goes. You mm-hmm. know, they say no boosted big blocks, blah, blah, blah. And most of the, I feel, most of those people that complain about it that much run, we'll say, 530s mm-hmm. or whatever. And then you have a car like Darcy's car, which he tunes, that go is stock everything Mustang, stock 5.3, and it goes 480s mm-hmm. on 8.5-inch tires right. at I-29. No Everybody preps. that's crying is <clears throat> can't keep up with that, and yeah, there's no way to. I mean, it, outlaw it. You can't make rules that are gonna slow that car down that don't hurt the whole field. Right, hundred percent. Right, it, it's just how it, it goes with that stuff. Like, and and the more rules you make, the fastest guy that has the more money, he's he's just gonna adapt better than everyone oh, else. Right, yeah. exactly. And that's gonna end up helping him because he's like, oh, well, I can just adapt quicker. I can just change my turbo Put in setup more quicker. effort and right yeah like it's it's not it's just the money i guess it's just gonna bring out faster cars and i see like pro mods full-blown pro mods street racing which oh is my weird God. to see yeah i don't know why yeah i mean even <laughs> at, wild. at the pad a couple weeks ago the car that was in the finals was like an x x275 car yeah we we like, know them pretty spicy. well yeah that's a radio versus world car. yeah radio yeah. versus rvw i was like so I mean, rvw stopped and they went 
street racing? 380s or something, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think 397. And, and nothing against country. them. If they fit the rules, go exactly. Yeah. Go win. I'm not against anybody 100%. that fits the rules. Uh, yeah, you can't blame the person that fit the rules. Nope. Not at all. And go puppy kick if there's money to win, I guess. Like, <laughs> hey, if there's money to win, it is what it is. Yeah, and that car, I mean, a pretty badass <clears throat> car. There's it no... is, for sure. They do really well, and we've raced with them a couple times, and, you know, they're kind of like us. They've got a great engine program, and they're really smart at what they do, mm -hmm. and you see that that's why they excel. Yeah, that's why that car was in the winner's circle. It, yep. it makes sense, and... You can give every other team there that same car, and they won't be the they same. They won't be in the winner circle, yeah. so it doesn't even matter, really. It's no it's yeah. kind of the whole combination needs to work. Guys, thank you for tuning in to the Bogetti Clips YouTube channel. For the full podcast, check us out on Bogetti Studios YouTube and all your audio platforms. Also, hit that subscribe button to not miss out on any of the new Bogetti Clips coming up.